What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to bring you an updated build guide to my almighty sorcerer ball lightning build. This is gonna be the final form or the final version to the build. And this is also what is going to be uh, the version of the build that I'm taking in to fight Zer. Okay, we got Zer in a couple weeks and we're gonna have a video all about how to prep you in order to go fight Zer and get ready to just blast through that uh dungeon rift or greater rifts if you will all that challenge so today i'm going to bring you my build guys this is um it's been changed a lot since the last build video so there's going to be some things that are different but strap in we're going to go over everything you need for the build the gear skills paragon board vampiric powers and a lot of just options if you want to swap things out so let's get right into it okay guys so starting out the build didn't change that much when it comes to the skills we did swap out two things but we got firebolt Firebolt is just two points in here because we're not actually running a basic at all. As you guys can see, we have two points in Firebolt because we're taking it in our very first enchantment slot. Okay, this is going to be the first enchantment slot. And the reason for this is doing direct damage from any of our skills is going to apply burning. This is going to be one of our elementals um, damage the buffs that we're going to talk about later. But we're going to apply burning to all of our enemies. Next, we're coming down. We're going to grab one point into Devastation for max mana and then three points into Elemental Dominance for when we cast our core mastery skill, which is going to be Ball Lightning, which is a mastery skill. It's going to deal 9% increased multiplicative damage when we cast it above 50 mana. Okay, we have 131 mana. We can actually get this a lot higher, but it is all that we have for now. So this should always apply with as much regen as we have in the build. We should have no issues with it. Next, we have points into Chain Lightning, but as you guys can see on our skill tree, we're not actually casting Chain Lightning. This is going to be the reason that we're taking the points into this is because we want to have it for our ultimate when we cast Unstable Currents. Okay, that's going to cast any... Um, it's going to cast a Shock skill, which is going to be Core Conjuration or Mastery. Mastery is going to be Ball Lightning. Core or Conjuration is going to be Lightning Spear. And then our core is going to be Chain Lightning and or Charge Bolts. But we took points into Chain Lightning because when Unstable Currents actually triggers, it's gonna when it triggers a Chain Lightning, it's going to trigger everything that we have points in. So we took it all the way up to Destructive Chain Lightning because we want a chance to form Crackling Energy, which is therefore going to keep our build at max mana and just give us all of our maximum damage bonuses. So that's the reason why we have that. And next we have it inside of our second our second enchantment skill slot which is when lightning uh, chain lightning forms automatically after spending 100 mana which is really easy in this build we're spamming ball lightnings and ball lightnings cost 32 so it's three ball lightnings and we're already about to trigger well it's three and a like one fourth chain lightnings and then we're going to be spawning up you know or have a chance to spawn crackling energy because chain lightning will form so it really helps us keep all of the crackling energy out there Next, what is our Sork build without our defensive skills? Now, these have changed a bit, so we're going to go over them. We got Flame Shield. Flame Shield is going to be our main defensive skill here. Uh, into Shimmering, this is going to heal us. However, if you don't have any issues with survivability, then I definitely suggest taking Mystical for the mana cost reduction so we can just spam our uh, Ball Lightnings even more. Next, we have Teleport into Shimmering Teleport for damage reduction. Main skill there, we got ice armor into enhanced ice armor the reason for this is the increased mana regen as well as having a barrier barrier is going to be very important in this build we'll talk about it later on in our gear pieces but we 100 want a barrier at all times then we max out glass cannon here for even more damage and then one into elemental attunement for on that lucky hit we reset one of our three defensive skills hopefully it's always teleport or flame shield but ice armor is just as good next we're coming down we're taking one point to align the elements for damage reduction and then we are maxing mana shield for damage reduction as well as protection which is going to always give us a barrier when we pop one of our cooldowns which is every skill except for ball lightning so we should always have a barrier whatsoever we should never not have a barrier in this build next we have ice blades now the reason that we take ice blades is for for a few small ones right we're taking summoned ice blades for that way 20 percent of the um, enhanced ice blades cooldown is applied to our other skills this is going to help our three defensive skills here but we mainly are going to use this to help kind of get our uptime covered on unstable currents so we can cast that more so again this is also going to apply our cold damage which we're going to talk about with our tau rasha ring later 
Then we're coming down to mastery skills. Of course, we're taking one point to enter flames and then three points into devouring blades for the crit chance okay, or crit damage, excuse me. Then of course we got one in static discharge. This gives us a chance to form crackling energy. And then we max out invigorating conduit, which when we make a crackling energy and absorb it, we gain 12 mana. This is another way that we're gonna have like max mana at all times, which is why we have chain lightning in our um, enchantment slot, as well as having it on the board here. Then next, of course, we got ball lightning. We're maxing this out into wizard's ball lightning, so that way we can form more crackling energies. Pretty self-explanatory there. Next, we take unstable currents, like I said, for that way when we cast a shock skill, a random core conjuration of mastery is also cast. Increase attack speed, uh, super strong. This is our huge ultimate here. It's a long cooldown, but we're doing our best to kind of reset it. Then we have coursing uh, currents, which is gonna give us increased crit strike chance until we crit. And then we got maxed out on electrocution, so that way enemies deal less damage to us, which makes us a little bit more tanky. Now, down here, I keep going back and forth on this, guys. I think in my previous video, I was still rocking overflowing energy as our key passive here. It is very, very good because this is going to help our cooldown, especially on uh, unstable currents on top of our other cooldown modifiers with ice blades. And it'll help reset our defensive skills. Um, but, however, you could definitely do Veer's Mastery. I have tested both. I really like both. Doing uh, Nightmare Dungeon 100s is super easy in either key passive. However, I do really think that as we can continue to fight Xur and we climb there, um, unless we have that glyph, you know, we should have that glyph that gives us the big damage increase. If we have that, I'm probably going to stick with overflowing just for the cooldown. But I think with that glyph, we're going to end up taking Veer's Mastery just for the increased damage and damage reduction, which is pretty cool. Or da it's less damage to us. But in the end, I still think I'm edging overflowing energy over Veer's. But... You know, let me know down in the comments what do you guys think about that. Okay, so next we're going into our uh, gear slots here. There were some people that talked about my attack power being so low. It's only almost 10K. I guess some other people have like 24,000 or something like that. I think they're rocking in Biter or something like that in their build. I'm not really sure. But anyway, let's get into the gear pieces and some gear swaps that you guys can do for the build. So I have Shaco here. This is best in slot helmet. Um, just gives us uh, four ranks and damage reduction on top of all the other stats. If you do not have this, guys, then God Slayers is perfectly fine. It'll be a very, very solid replacement. And then if you do not have God Slayers, then you can do a regular helmet with like Everling here, which is going to give you a little bit more um, damage reduction from crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies, which is, just makes you a little bit more tankier. Then next, we got our best in slot chess piece for Remnant of the Infinite. When we teleport, we stun them. Huge damage bonus here. Now, before we talk about the gloves, I'm going to go into Devault's Will. This is a no-brainer. Every time we dash, we become unstoppable. And when we're unstoppable, we gain 50 max resource, which is going to help keep us at full. And then we deal increased damage. No-brainer here. Now, next into our boots, real quick, this is an easy swap here. I always go back and forth between having Ghost Walkers with extra ranks and teleport, or we end up taking Esus for the increased critical strike chance. My critical strike chance is about 30%, and when I put these on, it goes up to roughly in the dungeon about 41%, 42%, which is still pretty good, but I still crit pretty often here. Um, however, you could go for a 100% crit build with this and Elementalist, which is why we're going to talk about our gloves. Now, I have tested out a lot of different abilities for this Nightmare Dungeon 100, Zir, Abitur of Zir um, build, and you have a lot of options here. So... Me, personally, I'm sticking with Accelerating. And you're probably going, well, War, it says Critical Strikes with Core Skills increases your attack speed. You don't have a Core Skill on your bar. That's true. However, we do have our Core Skill in our Enchantment slot. So, every single time that, not only do when we use Unstable Currents and we cast a Chain Lightning or a Charge Bolt, but when we spend enough mana to cast a, char a Chain Lightning, if that cast makes that one crit, then we will get an increase in attack speed. This is huge because you need to be able to ramp up those ball lightning little energy orbs as fast as possible. And in certain dungeons, they fall off very quickly. If you're going through a doorway, they're going to fall apart. So I personally will be using accelerating. However, you have a lot of options here. Okay, you can do edge masters, you could do elementalist for even more crit chance for 40% increased. You can do um, 
uh, what is it? Swell, uh, what is it? Swelling. Oh God, what is that one? Swelling something. It's called. It's called swelling something where you end up doing increased damage to vulnerable enemies. I don't think I have one. Uh, you could also do control here. Totally up to you guys. You have a lot of options in here. Um, but yeah, I am sticking with accelerating. But this is a major flex spot um, where you can really just kind of mix and match whatever that you guys want. So, But I'm sticking with accelerating. Uh, and then in, of course, in our main hand, we have gravitational, which is what's going to make the build work. And then we're doing um, Amulet of Disobedience. Now, I'm going to run over here real quick and show you why. You 100% need Gravitational for the build. That's what makes it orbit around you. But we want Disobedience inside of our Amulet for a few reasons. I showcased this showcased this of, on another build just to kind of highlight it. But I, I want to tell you right now that you're going to gain so much armor. So having a 100% Disobedience in here is going to give us about 5,000 armor. And you're going to see it right here as we go up. So we gain almost double armor at 100%. You see here we max. Having that 10,000 armor is pretty insane with all things considered, especially for survivability with these upcoming dungeons. And because the base dungeon for Zir is a Nightmare Dungeon 100 and we go higher than that, we want max survivability. So disobedience in the amulet. Next, we are doing a uh, Ring of Prodigy. Every time we use a cooldown, we restore uh, mana. Again, everything's a cooldown except for uh, Ball Lightning. Now, here's also another flex change. If you guys feel like your mana is fine and you're able to sustain which w whatever you're doing, you don't want to keep it at max, then you could also drop Prodigies here and put um, Elementalist in here is what I would 100% suggest. You put Elementalist in here, you get the extra 40% crit chance when you cast above 100, which is pretty easy. And even as you guys can see, like when I'm just casting, if I'm moving around, my mana is always full. And this does not include when I'm casting my cooldowns, right? So as I'm just gaining, so it's going to be really easy if you want to do Elementalist in this build and just have the increased uh, crit chance. Um, and then we have Conceited. This is the other main reason why I talked to you about the barrier. We deal 25% multiplicative damage while we have a barrier. Again, we are always going to have a barrier from Ice Armor. And we are always going to have a barrier when we use any kind of our skills because of the protection passive. Now, our last and final gear piece, guys, is Tal Rasha's uh, brand new ring. For each type of elemental damage, you deal inc increased 15% multiplicative damage. Okay, and then when dealing elemental damage, it refreshes all the bonus. So just to recap, recap, I think it's 60%, but we can get this thing higher. Um, but the base that I have it currently at is plus 60% multiplicative damage. So you got shock or lightning from ball lightning. You have uh, fire burning from fire bolt. And then we have ice blades. <clears throat> Excuse me for all of our frost or ice damage, right? So that gives us three, that puts us to 45%. Now we're gonna go take a look at our vampiric powers. This is the main power that I 100% am going to tell you you need to have on this build. It is infection. Hitting the same enemy eight times, inflicting a pox eight times, deals poison damage. So that's another 15%, so that puts us to 60% multiplicative damage and you can get this higher if you can apply physical damage or well it'd have to be an elemental damage so if you could apply shadow damage some way as well then you could get it even higher but 60 percent multiplicative damage is insane it's kind of nuts and this just absolutely melts enemies especially bosses so infection is our main vampiric power here we're doing metamorphose so that way when we dash it's going to make them vulnerable as you guys can see because we pair this with prey on the weak the metamorphose is going to apply a curse and then we make them vulnerable through prey on the week because when they have a curse they become vulnerable and we deal increased damage next we have ravenous on a lucky hit we have a chance to increase our attack speed now our lucky hit is very very low here um, however we do have some nice lucky hit chance on some of our other skills which is really nice mainly teleport now this is something that will ramp up your speed and i think it's really good um how many ball lightnings you're actually hitting with gives you a really solid chance to get this. And then last but not least, I'm choosing Undying. 
okay every time we cast a skill we heal so this is going to help our survivability now i will tell you this one major swap that i would do if you guys feel that revenus is not really giving you a lot of attack speed then 100 swap this for saint Jean brace wherever it is because when you kill an enemy you're going to fortify and while you have fortify for more than half your max life you get an increased strike chance if you want to go for more of that permanent crit strike build but when you have this on here when you have Saint Jean Brace Brace paired with Undying, you're literally you can't die. On top of all the armor that you're gonna get from your amulet, because you're gonna constantly heal, and then when you kill things, you're gonna be constantly fortified. So there's gonna be very very hard to heal you on top of how much armor that you actually have. So that is all the vampiric powers, guys. I'm gonna go into the Paragon board again. You know how we do it in these videos. I'm not gonna go everything over everything too. Uh, in detail because the build guide the written guide for all of this will be down in the description below but we made some major changes on our board okay we are no longer going with the speedier version of the build where we were, were utilizing a lot of crowd control now it's, we're just looking for straight damage and survivability so we're doing adept this is going to give us increased mastery skill damage which is ball lightning we got destruction for increased crit and then we got elementalist this is one big change the Paragon node increases the nearby uh, bonuses with non-physical damage, which is awesome. But more importantly, when we deal fire, cold, and lightning to an enemy, it increases all the damage we deal to them by 5% for 10 seconds. So we can deal an extra 15% multiplicative damage over 10 seconds as we continue to hit the same enemies. Super strong here. Next, we got Flame Feeder because we're dealing fire damage and we get a nice damage uh, reduction here. Uh, no, that one's just increased damage. I'm sorry. Territorial. This is where we get some nice damage reduction here, and everything's up close and personal. So we're dealing increased damage to close targets. And then our last glyph is reinforced. This is another reason why I say that we're always going to have a barrier, because we hit and cast so many spells, and not only that, with ice armor, we get another 15% damage reduction, which makes our survivability just go through the roof. So that is the Paragon board, guys. Uh, the link to it will be all down in the description below. But this is what I'm going to be using for uh, Zir, the upcoming Zir event, and just trying to go through that and get as high as I can. And then also, I've just been using this to farm Nightmare Dungeon 100s. I actually just posted a video yesterday about me using this build, just going through and absolutely slapping. So make sure to check that out. Um, and yeah, guys, that's the build. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.